Hello, you cheeky chaps. Today, I'm going to regale you with the story of a trebuchet. But not just any trebuchet. The largest trebuchet to have ever been built. The War Wolf. But first, what is a trebuchet? Well, here's one I made earlier. Yes, I did build a trebuchet for the sole purpose of demonstrating it in this video. It had nothing to do with my long-standing childhood goal of one day owning one. Nothing at all. A trebuchet is a type of catapult. It uses a long arm to throw a projectile. It was a common, powerful siege engine until the advent of gunpowder. The design of the trebuchet allows it to launch projectiles of greater weights and further distances than that of a traditional catapult. There were two common types. The first used manpower. The later, and often larger and more powerful, Counterweight trebuchets, also known as the counterpoise trebuchet, uses a counterweight to swing the arm. It appeared in both Christian and Muslim lands around the Mediterranean in the 12th century, and was carried back to China by the Mongols in the 13th century. Here is the one I built with my buddy over the weekend. This slow motion footage should help see how the mechanism works, and, in this case, how it launches our swede and melon about 200 feet. Our trebuchet, as can be seen here, was about 14 foot tall, with the arm pointing skyward and using a counterweight of about 120 kilograms. Believe me, getting that counterweight up onto the pivot point was a hard thing to do. Turns out it's better to add the weight later rather than dumping two bags of cement and rubble into a box and saving the rest for Ron. It's a learning curve. The historical trebuchet we're talking about today, though, was huge. And I mean truly humongous. It stood at 400 feet tall and was able to hurl projectiles at a speed of 120 miles an hour. It could effectively toss stones weighing 3 to 400 pounds from a distance of 700 feet. That is just mental. So what is the context? Why was this bad chap built? Well, in 1304, Stirling Castle was the last Scottish holdout to the English invasion. Edward I of England had almost pummeled the Scots into submission, but to have complete control of Scotland, he needed to capture Stirling Castle. Stirling Castle is a striking man-made addition to a natural fortress. Sheer cliffs thrust up from the rolling Scottish lowlands. The thick castle walls extend these rock pillars up towards the sky. It is imposing and seems impregnable. It probably was impregnable, at least until the War Wolf was constructed. After Edward's forces had surrounded the castle, he ordered his skilled siege engineers, who had had quite a lot of practice around Scotland, to begin plans on the conquest of the castle. You see, Edward did not want to leave anything to chance. He didn't want to merely suppress the Scottish opposition, he wanted to crush it. And to do this, he ordered the construction of what became renowned as the largest medieval siege weapon ever built. Its nickname has stood the test of time, the War Wolf, a weapon of terror designed to strike fear and impress his might. When disassembled, this beast filled 30 wagons. It took 50 carpenters and five foremen a long time to complete. Records indicate the construction took at least three months of constant work. It stood so tall that some reports say even the birds were reluctant to perch atop the machine. 400 feet, my word. Here is the Statue of Liberty, which is some monument across the pond apparently, with its pedestal. And this is it in comparison with the Vorwolf. This thing was massive. After construction was finished, hammers and chisels laid down, something maybe not so surprising happened. The Scots in the castle surrendered, and to be honest, I can't bloody blame them. The thing was 400 feet tall, for Christ's sake. The reason for surrender, however, is debated by historians, but I'm sure the giant machine of boulder-throwing death had something to do with it. What is clear, however, is that the garrison were willing to surrender. Matthew Strickland's account notes that, by a piece of cold-blooded cruelty which shows Edward in a singularly unattractive light, the king refused to allow the garrison to capitulate until he had brought his great engine, Warwolf, to play against the castle. The English king is widely quoted as replying to the plea for surrender that, You don't deserve any grace. 
but must surrender to my will. That's right. Edward ordered the surrendered back into the castle so he could test his trebuchet. It did take three months to build, after all. I imagine the populace of the castle cowered in the keep and waited whilst the great machine was cranked back, loaded, and fired against the walls of the castle, throwing its 400-pound boulder into the stonework and leveling a section of the wall of the castle. After this, the surrender was accepted. I guess Edward just really wanted to see if the thing worked. I wish we still had this beast available to view and study today, but alas, of course, we do not. All we can do now is marvel in the story of the war wolf and occasionally look into the sky and thank our lucky stars we don't have a giant boulder headed in our direction. I hope you enjoyed the video, chaps. An interesting tale indeed. I also hope you're liking the new style of content. Thanks so much for the feedback after the last video. I've tried to take it into account, but please do keep it coming. I want to make the best stuff for you as physically possible. As always, if you have any interesting anecdotes from history that you might want to see me retell in a somewhat dramatic fashion, please do leave them in the comments down below or chuck them on the Discord. Links are in the description. Stay coy.